Dear students, today we are going to see the demonstration of the mouth and after that mouth we can continue with the pharynx. First I will explain about the mouth. The mouth, it is the commencement or the uppermost part of the digestive system or gastrointestinal tract. It is having two parts as the anterior part as the cleft like portion as vestibule of the mouth. Then posteriormost part of the mouth or oral cavity we can call it as oral cavity proper. The vestibule of the mouth which is anteriorly bounded by upper lip and lower lip. Between the upper lip and lower lip, which, which will be having opening, that is a oral fissure. Oral fissure. Then posteriorly, which is bounded by the uh, that upper teeth as well as lower teeth, along with the respective gums, upper gums and lower gums. Now, structure of the each lip, if you are seeing, so the superior lip and inferior lip, which is made up of mainly muscle. The muscle is nothing but orbicularis uris. That externally, which is lined with the skin, internally lined with the mucous membrane. That mucous membrane, which is lined with the stratified squamous epithelia, non keratinized whereas externally the skin which line with the stratified squamous epithelia keratinized at the junction between the ectodermal origin and endodermal origin which will be represent the lip as mucocutinate junction so that will be seen as discoloration of the skin and mucous membrane at the lip of the lower margin of the lip of the uh, vestibule. So that will be seen in the upper lip as well as you can see in the lower lip. The mucous membrane, if if you are going to trace upwards as well as downwards, get reflected with the gums as a folding, upper folding as well as lower folding. So this lips continues laterally with the cheek. In the cheek, you have the opening of the parotid duct. The parotid duct that would pierce the structure from superstitial deep, they are coccopharyngeal membrane, vaccinata, varingobacil of Asia, submucous membrane, tissue, and mucosal membrane. Mucosal membrane. It will get open into the vestibule of the mouth. Just uh, opposed to the grown or root of the second upper molar tooth. So that is the opening of the parotid duct. Now, apart from the lining of the mucous membrane and like epithelium, the lips having small, num, small uh, size of the various mucous secreting glands. Mucous secreting glands. Even further, the vestibule of the mouth, which communicate with the oral cavity proper, by the gap pressure behind to the last molar teeth in the left side as well as in the right side. If you are in the if you are in the condition of the clenching position, so during the clenching position, the vestibule of the mouth, which communicate with the oral cavity proper to the gap present behind to the last molar tooth. Vestibule already I said it continues with the cheek. Uh, the cheek is a lateral part of the vestibule. It continues towards the parotid region which develops by the part of the maxillary prominence and part of the mandibular prominence. That is a process comes to the first pharyngeal arch. In this region, 
you have mainly a muscle called as pugsinata apart from the pugsinatas various other muscle which will get converges towards the angle of the mouth converges towards the angle of the mouth so the structure of the cheek if you are seeing the external surface which lines the skin deep to the skin you have got the buccopharyngeal fascia or membrane then you have the buccinata then you have the pharyngobasilar fascia then you have submucosa then you have the mucosa so any defect in the cheek due to the muscular incoordination the foot abnormally get lodged in the cheek so that we, we can have due to the defect of the nerve supply to the muscles of the cheek as well as the buccinator so that buccinator muscle has origin from three or four different places as upper upper part middle part and lower part the upper part of the fiber upper fiber which takes origin from along the opposite the root of last three molar teeth in the maxillary alveolar process the lower part that which takes origin from the uh, last opposite root of the last molar last or last three teeth that is the uh, last three molar teeth in the lower or mandibular alveolar arch the middle fiber that which takes origin from the terigo mandibular raphe the terigo mandibular raphe it is nothing but the condensed part of the fiber elastic part of formed by buccinata and as well as the superior constrictor of the pharynx then the muscle fiber upper fiber which goes in the same direction lower fiber which goes in the same direction the middle fiber which may get decussate so the decussation may be going the upper fiber which goes to lower level the lower fiber which goes to upper upper lip upper fiber which goes to the lower lip the lower fiber which goes to the upper lip in this manner which get merges in the midline in the philtrum as well as in the mid part which is the opposite muscles of the buccinate it is a deeper muscle of the face deeper muscle of the face okay sir okay. next now we can see that oral cavity proper this oral cavity proper is a major part of the mouth so this oral cavity proper along with the vestibule you can have the helping for the masticatory process as well as it helps for the speech as well as it will help for the deglutition even it may take part in the formation of the phonation now the roof of the oral cavity formed by hard palate in the anterior part soft palate in the posterior part the hard palate the inferior surface of hard palate lined with the mucous membrane which present anterior numerous transverse ridges transverse ridges so that lining mucous membrane lined with the stratified squamous epithelia non keratinized non keratinized so the oral cavity have proper having roof floor anterior boundary and posterior boundary anteriorly it is bounded by the alveolar process of maxilla as well as alveolar process of the mandible apart from that alveolar process the presence of the teeth as well as the root of the teeth with the roof you have the reflex from the mucous membrane that is the gums so teeth comes and alveolar arch that would make that anterior boundary as well as the lateral boundary of the oral cavity proper oral cavity proper posteriorly it will get open into the part of the pharynx that part of the pharynx 
is nothing but oral thought of the pharynx through oropharyngeal isthmus oropharyngeal isthmus because we have the pharyngeal isthmus here through which you will get communicate then coming to the floor the floor it is having it is mainly formed by myelohyoid muscle and also muscles of the tongue in the floor you have the attachment of the tongue that is the root of the tongue root of the tongue so in the floor with the tongue and the lower alveolar process so where also you have the lining of the mucous membrane that mucous membrane having the reflection of the folding of the mucous membrane that is the lingulum of the uh, frenulum of the lingual or frenulum of the tongue so that which get attached to the inferior or under surface of the tongue with the flora of the mouth so flora of the mouth containing the tongue as a important organ so as already said the flora of the mouth which mainly formed by myelohyoid muscle and also some of the connective tissue in the floor apart from the midline lingulum frenulum that tongue on either side you have the presence of the elevation that which formed by the deep lingual vein and also vessel then lateral to that you have the reflection of the mucous membrane as in serrated manner that called as plica fimbriata plica fimbriata this is about the oral cavity proper lena on apre in the vestibule of the mouth you have the reflection of the mucous membrane towards the gums as with the upper lip so frenulum of the lip similarly you have in the lower lip as a frenulum of the lower that is the reflection of mucous membrane with the gums and the lower lip similarly in the upper lip with the gums and upper lip that is the frenulum of the lip you can say